Hey Jack, remember remember a couple years ago when we did a project and I was limping around? Yeah. Because that boulder fell on my toe? Yeah. Remember how you laughed at me? Yeah. <laughs> Who's laughing now, fella? <laughs> All right, before we get too far, I want to start right here. This is the feature that we actually originally got called out for. Uh, when I showed up, the homeowner, Chris, he said, you know what, we're going to pause on this. The reason being is we've got to go to the backyard right through here, and that's our access. This is a later date feature that will cut off access to the backyard. What he wants to do is have a bridge and a little bit of a stream that goes through, and that would be problematic so pause on that now we have got some tight spaces to work with to get through here and this is our gate so we're gonna bring the machine back here in uh, one shot and then uh, we're gonna have to truck all of our boulders back here by hand this will be a staging area and right over here is where we're gonna be living for this project so what we have is an old concrete uh, feature with some natural boulders integrated into it but as the happens very often with this style of feature they they had uh, some problems uh, with it i don't know if it was uh, the situation where it was leaking constant maintenance uh, you name it there's a handful of things that we have to deal with on these features so we're ripping it out and uh, starting with this clean slate but what we also have to uh, deal with is this concrete patio and they have some uh, rocks in place that the concrete was poured around and he really wants to keep those so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our concrete saw and cut through here and then cut through here our waterfall is gonna be right back there where uh, uh, Jaren's standing it's gonna start up against that wall and kind of meander and go this direction so what we have to do right now is get all this landscape gravel out of the way get us a clean canvas to work with so we can can bring in the heavy hitter. We've got our jackhammer and our concrete saw. We're gonna have to do some uh, some hard work today to get to a starting point. All of this has to come out. Under all this dirt is another concrete shell. You can kind of see the edge of it right here. So uh, we won't have to remove 100% of that, but uh, we're gonna have to cut like that to get our aqua blocks in place and our pump vault. So speaking of maintenance, uh, I do want to uh, set the expectation that there is maintenance on these features. There are zero in existence water features that are zero maintenance. Just doesn't happen. There is a little bit of maintenance involved in this, but this is about as maintenance friendly as it gets. And how we install our components, how we run our plumbing, our wiring, all of that makes repairs and service work a lot easier as well. And you'll see that throughout this video. Okay, the fellas are getting the shade out of the way because we're gonna bring in the excavator and uh, do a little bit of digging uh, to get our aqua blocks all set to elevation. Now, the, the concern that we have is there's no record of how that uh, barbecue uh, got its gas line. It comes from this direction. We just don't know if it's over here over here so we will it's really unlikely that it was under the shell of the uh the pond but we just don't know and uh the the depth of that pump vault it, that's about the location it's going to go that's going to be our deepest point so it's going to be a total of another seven inches lower than our aqua blocks from the top of our concrete to the top of our aqua block 
we're gonna sink those down uh, to be about four inches lower than the deck. So those aqua blocks are nine and a half inches tall. So uh, they'll be about uh, 14 and a half, 15 inches from top of concrete to bottom of aqua blocks. So that's what we're uh, going off of. And then plus another seven inches for the foot of this, uh, this pump vault. Let's not hit anything. You good with that? Hey, by the way, Jack's back. Well, I have a mistake that I have to confess to. Blake is not here, so we can't blame him. But Jaren is. And so not a big deal, right? Because I kind of knew what had happened or the potential of what uh, was gonna be there when I pulled the rock out. But this is uh, experience when you know, when you've been doing this long enough, you have a gut feeling, you know when that contact is not right. You have to pull your rocks out and check. This is another reason why we are so particular about uh, how we do our ground prep, uh, having the proper fabric and liner and then more fabric, sandwiching that liner and really adding that extra protection. But you have to pay attention. You have to be aware of when that contact is a little too aggressive, you have to pull back and check it out and then fix it. So it's real simple. I'm gonna show you the process of patching the liner. All right guys, so what I have here is our Firestone primer. This is the solvent that, uh, that we'll put onto the liner and it helps open up the pores in the liner. Now, this is our cover tape. This is used for seaming and then doing a, uh, a cover tape section over our seam. And uh, this is not needed, but this is our double-sided seam tape. So this is our bucket of goodies. And then we have uh, a, a scour pad. So a lot of times what we'll use this scour pad is to uh, clean the surface, kind of rough it up a little bit and open the pores in that liner so our primer can really penetrate and uh, uh, have a good surface to bond onto. So what I've done is I've cut off a, a square of uh, the cover tape and I also have just a little bit of damage down below. So we've got uh, a section, we're just gonna put a, uh, put a patch right here. I don't need to do both sides. Sometimes we'll, we'll do both sides. Uh, it's a rare occasion, but if, uh, if it, the situation is where we have problematic surface on both sides, then we'll cover tape both sides. But so this cover tape will solve our problems and we'll be able to continue rocking and rolling. <laughs> All right, guys, one thing that uh, I see a lot of people do is they take the primer can and they shake it like a paint can. If you ever opened up uh, paint after it's been uh, shaken like that, you see all those little micro bubbles in it. Same thing happens in here. So what we don't want is we don't want a bunch of uh, air bubbles within our solvent. So if we do a swirling motion, that'll help uh, reduce the amount of aeration that we're causing down inside there. All right, guys, uh, so like on a, t a day like today, it's 105 out, I believe. It does not take long for this solvent to uh, set up. So you wanna get to the point where it's not wet, but it's, it's tacky. And uh, so short, uh, short amount of time, it is ready to go. And what we do is we peel off our cover tape and apply. Now this was well out of our water level. This is above water level. So, uh, but it's just good practice. I did not want to ignore this. I wanted to also take the opportunity to kind of show you guys uh, what we got to do to, uh, to patch a liner. And, uh, you know, just to remind you, be careful. Liners are sensitive. We don't like to damage them. Okay, 
Okay, getting close guys. We have got, uh, the bibs are all done. Uh, what we did was we ran the garden hose up here and spotted some issues. So Blake is gonna go around and uh, you see spots like this. We got a gap right there, we're losing water. So there's a few gaps around the edges that we've got to uh, fill in and then uh, cover up that, uh, that spillway up there and give her a test run and see how things are looking. And uh, set a couple rocks uh, over here on this side to uh, close that gap between the wall and then we can get this machine out of here and have a nice visual to really see the way this is looking. Nice job, fellas. JJ Ron, it's bittersweet, buddy. All right, guys, uh, this was a great project. Had lots of fun with these guys. Blood, sweat, and tears, right? Every time. Every time, especially when uh, it's 110 degrees out. Yeah. Lots of sweat. So, Jaron, this is Jaron's last Hondless Waterfall project with us. He started with a tear out and rebuild of a pondless waterfall just about a year and a month ago, a year and some change ago, and he's had enough. Said, I'm done, done doing this. I'm going back to doing something easy. Uh, I get it, I get it. All right, guys, so let's take a walk through this pondless waterfall and uh, show you what we like about it and let us know what you like about it. All right, guys, so here we are. We have a 12-foot pondless waterfall with an aqua surge 4,000 to 8,000 variable speed pump. And uh, that uh, pump is nestled right in there. I, so I love the way this all came together, uh, especially this setting. They had a, uh, a monstrosity that they were living with for a long time, and it was uh, nothing but headache. And uh, now we were able to save these uh, homeowners as far as uh, being a water feature fan. So now they're living the aquascape lifestyle and we've got this beautiful pondless waterfall. So we've got four drops and the main purpose of this was to help drown out the road noise from over there off of Riggs Road. So I think we nailed that and I uh, really love how it uh, is nestled into this concrete. That concrete uh, kind of went uh, over and uh, well, you saw the beginning of the video. We did a bunch of cutting, got rid of that and it fits in there perfect. And that rock that was always in that concrete, still there, a couple other accent pieces around the concrete patio. So uh, I think it turned out great. What's your favorite part? Let me tell you what my favorite part is. My favorite part was doing this with a great team. And that's no joke. Like uh, being out here, my son Jack, that was cool to have him out here for a little bit. Of course, he ditched out on us and had to go to his other job. But uh, to do this with uh, a great group of guys, that's the fun part for me. But then to create something that the homeowners loved, my favorite part was th they were out here before we were even done. They're kind of decorating, sweeping up, and that's our job. And they're just saying how much they love it. So, and it's 110 degrees. I mean, how are you out here enjoying this right now? But they are in love with it. So that's my favorite part. All right, guys, so you know that we like doing those low profile rocks that uh, give our feathered friends and lizards and butterflies a, a spot to come and get a drink of water. We've got a few of those within this feature. Nice little area right here. They can come and uh, get drinks of water. And then also we've got some low profile rocks over here on this side. You know, this is real close to that water surface. So I love doing stuff like that to, to help bring uh, nature as close to the features as possible. So, and then the sound, the sound is great. We've got a lot of traffic sound behind us. So this really helps. And uh, under this covered patio, it kind of echoes and brings uh, a more deep bass sound. 
to that patio. So I'm really excited for our homeowners to have that and to uh, kind of drown out some of that major traffic sound. All right, guys, there is another one in the ground. You know the drill. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you liked about this feature. And we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Minus Jeremy.